Hey there, physical science students. This is Ms. Ruark, and we're finishing up um, chapter 11 with our podcast 2.6 over motion and force. All right, so we've talked about this. This should be review. Let's just jump through it and go through it quickly. Okay, what is a force? So a force is any action that's exerted on the body. It's going to be a push or a pull, anything that uh, changes the body's state of motion or state of rest. Force has a magnitude, a number, and a direction, so force would be considered a vector. Okay, why? Because it has, whoops, because it has a, a direction as well. All right, four fundamental forces that you could come across. One of them is the force of gravity. We know that because it pulls us down to the ground. It holds us on the earth. We also have an electromagnetic force, a strong nuclear force, and a weak nuclear force. Okay, so the forces are going to vary in strength and depend on the distance over which they act. So the weak nuclear force and the strong nuclear force are typically what you're going to find inside of an atom. It's what holds the atom together. It's what holds the nucleus together. Okay, your electromagnetic force would be similar to um, something that you would see through um, you know magnetic forces you have the poles pulling together okay similar to that um, the further apart those objects are the weaker the force will be so the moon gravitates around the earth because it's close however if the moon was further away from the earth it wouldn't gravitate around it it would just go away because the force of attraction between, you know, that force of gravity there is weaker because the distance is further, okay? And then the strength of these different fundamental forces. So the strong force is going to be stronger than the electromagnetic, which is going to be stronger than the weak force, which is actually stronger than gravity. So gravity is going to be the strongest of all of these. It really doesn't seem like it, right? But uh, in the grand scheme of things, it really is not that strong of a force. All right, those forces can act through direct contact or they can act by just being close. Okay, think about it. You take two magnets and you set them close to each other. You don't have to have them touching. You just have them close. And guess what? They pull to each other. Okay, it's because their forces are acting through that, that closeness. Okay, but if you take those magnets and pull them further apart, are they going to pull together? No, they're going to stay apart because the distance is greater than the force. All right, balanced and unbalanced forces. We talked about this in Chapter 12. Balanced and unbalanced forces is when um, forces acting on an object can be combined to figure out the net force. Remember, net force is the overall force that's being applied to the object. So balanced forces are equal forces, and they don't make an object move. Okay, they're, they're coming from opposite sides, and they cancel each other out. Okay, that's the important part with the balanced forces. They cancel each other out. Unequal forces or unbalanced forces are unequal, and they act on an object, but they make the object move. They change its motion. Okay. Balanced forces, these are examples of balanced forces here. Okay, The balanced force is going to have a net force equal to zero. The object at rest will not start moving, so this hat is going to stay on this guy's head because all of the forces are balanced. Just like this light hanging here is going to continue hanging because all of the forces are balanced. Now once the forces become unbalanced they're going to either sway or drop or fall. Okay, So they don't change the motion of an object that's moving either. So if we had a bowling ball here and it was rolling, balance forces meaning that ball is going to keep going. It's kind of like inertia. All right, unbalanced forces. With unbalanced forces, the net force is not equal to zero. That means there is going to be a net force. The object will move in the direction of the greater force. Okay, so if you had an elephant on one side pushing against a box and you had a mouse on the other side pushing against the box in the opposite direction, the box is probably going to go in the direction that the elephant is pushing it because the elephant will be able to produce more force. The net force will be in the direction um, that the elephant is pushing in. All right, what about other forces? Uh, what about forces acting in different directions that are not opposite to each other? Well, what happens, they combine those forces and it acts as a single force, okay, and it causes it to accelerate. All right, let's see if I've got, now I don't have an example. So let's say that here, instead of having this weak force to the right, we had a strong force on the left, and then we had another weak force coming from the left over here. Okay, what's going to happen? It's going to actually increase the rate of acceleration. It's going to make that box go flying faster. It's going to combine those forces. It acts as like one big force.
All right, friction. We know that friction is a force that opposes motion between two surfaces in contact. All right, well, a lot of people say, but what if they're smooth surfaces? Smooth surfaces won't actually have any friction. Wrong. They do. Okay, friction is an unbalanced force, and here between these two smooth surfaces, here's your smooth surfaces, but guess what? Every smooth surfaces has a little bit of a rough side. It's got hills and valleys and when those two surfaces come into contact with each other the hills and valleys will stick to the hill and valleys of the other surface and that's what causes that friction. Sometimes the friction is very obvious and other times the friction is not that obvious but it's there. Okay. Rubbing two surfaces together, that friction will cause heat and that's how if you are stuck in the woods and you can make one of those little uh, wood turners, I can't remember what they're called right now, but you put the stick down and you turn it real fast and the stick pushes down into the wood and causes the wood with the heat to get caught on fire while well, it causes little sparks and embers. Okay, types of friction. There's two types of friction, well more than that. There's static friction, which is the friction between two surface, surfaces that are stationary, which means they're standing still, static, standing still, not moving. Okay. Kinetic friction is the friction between two surfaces that are moving. Okay. Um, the force required to, well, here, let's look over here. So this object here is not moving. Okay. Static friction right here that's between this, the bottom of this container and the surface that it's on is keeping it from moving. So that's the static friction is preventing it from moving further. Okay, kinetic friction, if this object is already moving, kinetic friction is what opposes the motion. So it's already moving, but that's why you still have to push on it some more to get it to keep moving because that kinetic friction is saying, stop, stop. All right. The force required to make a stationary object start moving is usually greater than the force necessary to keep it moving. All right, let's think about this. Okay, you guys have probably seen in the strongman contest where the guy is pulling a big old semi truck behind him down a road, right? Okay, let's think about it. <clears throat> Static friction is going to be greater than kinetic friction. So once he starts pulling on that, he's got to overcome the static friction that's sitting there to pull this big huge truck behind him. Okay, now once the object starts moving because it has inertia, it has momentum, the kinetic friction will be less because all he has to do is keep pulling. He doesn't have to continue to apply more force, he just has to keep a constant force in order to keep it moving. Okay, so static friction, to get something moving, you're going to have to put more force into it than you would for it to continue moving. All right, kinetic friction. We can break kinetic friction down into different types of kinetic friction. They're not all the same. All right, depends on the option and object and its motion. So we have sliding friction, which is when an object slides past another. Okay, we have rolling friction. Oops, that's static friction, sorry. Sliding friction is when it slides past another. And then rolling friction is when it's rolling past. No, we want to keep this all. No, we don't want to do that. Let's, oh, uh-oh. Hold on. Whew, got it all fixed. Okay, rolling friction is going to be when an object is rolling on a surface. <clears throat> okay, so rolling friction is going to be less than sliding friction, which means that, <clears throat> excuse me, the friction trying to keep an object from rolling is going to be less than the friction trying to keep something from sliding. Why do you think that's possible? Or why do you think that's there? Well, think about the surface area, the amount of area that's being touched. The amount of surface area that's being touched between the object that's rolling and the object that's sliding, okay, the, the rolling object will be have less surface touching at one given time than the sliding will have. And so the sliding friction, or the sliding object will have more surface area touching. See here, let me erase this. Okay, here, this whole bottom here is touching. Okay, there's a lot of surface area. You've got this whole bottom here that's touching. So you've got friction all over this entire bottom here. Well, here on this rolling piece, you've got this. And that's the only part that's touching. So you see how the surface area is less. So there's less room for friction. 
All right, friction and motion. Friction is needed for everyday tasks to occur. So to drive a car, walk down the hall, writing notes, etc. Everything needs friction. Okay? Unwanted friction can be lowered. So if you have friction that you don't want to have, you can lower it. You can use low friction materials such as the pots and pans that are covered with Teflon non-stick right we don't want that we don't want those eggs to stick in the morning that's disgusting all right we can also we don't want our gears in our cars to stick so we lubricate them not this way but we lubricate them because we don't want them to stick we want that machine to continue to perform at top notch all right we can also help increase friction to make the friction helpful for us so we can make surfaces rougher and we can increase the force pushing the surfaces together so think about this on a cold day when the ice is over now we don't have this issue down here but up north we do okay so on a cold day when it ices over you will see a bunch of trucks not like this but different you'll see a bunch of trucks out on the roads and they are tossing ice well, not ice, excuse me, salt. They're tossing a salt mixture onto the ice because they want to melt the ice. They want to lower the freezing point of it. Okay, so what that does is it actually increases the friction. It increases the friction so that when you drive your vehicle on the road, you won't crash. Ha, huh, what a concept. All right, and since we're talking about force and I love Star Wars, here you go. I'll see you in class.